Hello everyone and welcome to your NASA weekly update for the week commencing Monday the 3rd of April 2023. I hope you all survived April Fool's Day and didn't get too caught out by any fun and hilarity. It's Gary here again and Rangers are back which makes life feel just a little bit more normal doesn't it? As I said over the last couple of pods it was nice to get a break, it is nice to get a break and to recharge the batteries but now that we're back and we have what would that be another couple of months ahead of us before we wrap up the season and put it behind us it's kind of great just to to have everything all organized as well so that's great and i'm sure well you know i keep maybe i'm just wishing but i'm going to say i'm sure that there's going to be quite a few twists and turns coming our way in the, the remaining 10 games of the season and i am emphasize the 10 part of that and if you're counting the games you'll know what I mean by that and that will hopefully end up with us having some at least some silverware to celebrate together and hopefully have said silverware at the convention with us as well so on to the game segment for last week just the one game this past week guys as you will know and that was Saturday's what would you say kind of routine win against bottom club Dundee United both goals coming either side of half time from Malik Tillman, who's I just keep saying his name every time we're scoring goals these days, don't I? And I honestly, to goodness, I had no idea that Jim Goodwin had been appointed the Dundee United manager until Saturday's game there, and until Tom Miller was talking on uh, on Rangers TV about Jim Goodwin and stuff, and I was like, that's odd. Why is he talking? Why is he talking about him? Because the last we seen him, he was walking away. I don't even think he got on the Aberdeen bus, did he? After he got sacked, uh, like it just felt like a few weeks back. But um, I guess uh, Dundee United needed someone else um, in the in the hot seat, and he got it. So it shows you just how much attention I pay to the other dross in our league, doesn't? <laughs> Anyway, from a summary perspective, as I said, kind of routine uh, and, I don't know, competent? Is that the best word to use? Um, you know, against a team who are in absolute desperate need um, of, of some points as they're rooted at the bottom, but not out of sight, of course. So that's probably a good thing for them. And, and I reckon the most memorable thing that we'll take from the game is the fact that it was Alan McGregor's 500th game for Rangers. I don't think I'll remember it for anything else other than that. Taking up to an incredible appearance tally, uh, tally, tally <laughs> for a great club. And, and the first goal came from a kind of ball rifled in. I think I can't remember who it was. Was it Conor Goals that rifled it in? And then, then there was this sort of ballet style move out the way, but get a pass in at the same time move from Todd Cantwell to, over to Tillman, who controlled it and then slammed it home. And that was a really good goal, really, really well worked. And, and, and Cantwell just is, is just going from strength to strength in a blue jersey. It's incredible to see. And and quite whether he meant it though or not, doesn't really matter. He got the ball where it needed to go and Tillman did the rest. We also had the bar with a brilliant shot from Ryan Kent. So unfortunate that one didn't go in. Um, and who I thought Ryan Kent again was pretty lively uh, throughout throughout the game. And in the second half, uh, James Tavernier slotted to, to Tillman who got the ball from like kind of under his feet. You know, he almost had to do a bit of a ballet move as well and then slammed it home. But I have to say, I think maybe the Dundee United goalie would be a wee bit disappointed with that one. Although it did flash through a couple of their players, even still a wee bit of dodgy goalkeeping there, I reckon. I would be disappointed, let me just say this, if it was Alan McGregor at the other side against any team. It doesn't matter who it is, but it was a second goal and and we'll take it, of course. And we did pepper their goal for the remainder of the game, but it was all, at that point for me, it was all just a bit kind of monotonous, you know, a little bit uninspiring and not not massively entertaining overall, if, if I'm being brutally honest, actually. You know, we were down at the game and it was easy to take your eyes off the screen because there wasn't a whole hell of a lot of, of excitement happening there. You know, the, the stats, which you'll get in a wee second here, tells a story of an absolute dominant performance and, you know, one that we couldn't shoot and maybe won by more goals. But just, I don't know, the Ibrox games are getting a wee bit, a wee bit mundane and it's the, it's the time away from home that we're, that we're having a bit of a good time these days in terms of entertainment factor. So, yeah, we'll see. Well, hopefully that continues to this weekend. Let me just say that. Positives, the result, of, of course, and a clean sheet for McGregor in his 500th game and, and uh, no injuries as far as I could tell um, ahead of, of this week's Old Firm game. And also uh, more minutes in in the game for John Souter, which I think is is a great thing. He's 
you know, he's not doing a Kamar roof where he's coming back and then breaking down again. However, they've managed to manage him thus far. Seems to have been working, and you know, he's getting, he's getting, he's getting game time, which is which is great to see. Negatives, there weren't really any negatives per se. I don't, I don't think the team was really absolutely on fire or rocking and rolling. And, and as I mentioned earlier, they could and should have maybe scored uh, some more, but we we got what we needed and we we move on on the stat side we did have 77 percent possession and 18 shots 11 on target and to, to their six but it wasn't for me it just wasn't one of those ones where like inspired goalkeeping or anything it was just i don't know i, I didn't feel like there was that many more goals going to come in the game is probably the way to say it and that's not from a pessimistic point of view it's just my reading of the game on the referee watch, uh, Don Robertson did all right. I did. I did think uh, Tav's booking uh, was absolutely nonsense, and and he really should have booked the player for for blatant embellishment at being ever so slightly brushed by Tav's hand. And you know, I could see why Robertson would give it because he's kind of coming in from the back. I mean, the linesman is looking right. I mean, the linesman is literally right there, and he could have a word with the referee and give him a bit of a. You know, a bit of a steer there and, and avoid the, the yellow card because Tav doesn't get a lot of yellow cards and I don't know if that was maybe one of the things that he got substituted for towards the end just to, to either save him for, for this weekend's game or just to maybe save him from getting you know some something else some other rash challenge or something and all of a sudden he's on a second booking and then he's gone I don't know but I didn't think it was we get the benefit of the replays I guess is probably the best way to say it but even the first time the guy goes down as if he's been shot and punched in the face at the same time a clown and I think Alfredo Morelos could have got a penalty in the second half I mean he just got barges right in the back and and the referee and VAR didn't do anything about that either and on the replays I didn't see maybe too too many replays shown on RTV for that one but I thought I thought that was a stonewaller I mean why, why would he jump out the way like he did maybe maybe I was a wee bit inebriated by that time so maybe there's some, um, something to that I'm not sure but anyway for that he's not getting the standard 7 out of 10 he's going to get a 6 out of 10 uh, for that one those two decisions being the deciding factor so with that result and the fact that that other mob won again by the same scoreline albeit in somewhat uh, controversial circumstances as far as I understand it then we have 8 games to go and we remain the 9 points behind them and that makes this weekend's game all the more important and monumental for us so on to that the one just the one game this week and it's in the league and it's against that mob and it's away from home so as i alluded to a little bit earlier there if the entertainment and the actual genuine real robust bona fide performances are coming away from home then that bodes well for us and that's this saturday the 8th of april at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, that's 12.30 p.m. UK. We're all back to completely on the level with our timing between the British Summer Time, or Daylight Savings Time, I guess we call it, and and that, um, you know, between ourselves and the UK now. So the last time we played them, of course, it just it felt like just a couple of weeks ago now, was the League Cup Final, where we just really never showed up and, and gave ourselves... You know, more more disappointingly, gave ourselves a real opportunity to win to win the trophy on that day, and I think it would be fair to say on on every of all the games that we've that we've played, that would have been uh, under Michael Beale's tenure. I should qualify. Uh, that was that was Beale's worst day for us um, since his return to the club. He just didn't go for it the way that we thought. He didn't seem to play to our strengths and and kind of over respected them, or maybe the team over respected them when we crossed the the white lines, but. It wasn't. It wasn't a good day. It was even when we scored the, the first goal, the our first goal. You know, I don't think, as I mentioned on the the the, the pod afterwards, I don't think we had another meaningful shot on target in the last what ten fifteen minutes. So, not good enough. We also drew two two with him back at Ibrox in January, and and Michael Beale's first old firm game as manager, and that was goals from, um, Kent and James Tavernier from the penalty spot. And that was after we gave them. Who was it? Was it Alfie that passed right across? And then Tav didn't defend Maida and he runs in and scores in the fifth minute. Like, come on, guys. And then we got the unfortunate, or for their side, the fortunate um, equaliser uh, for them in the 88th minute to, to drop a couple of points. And that would have made things a wee bit more interesting. You know, seven points down with eight games to play, with two games to go against them. Seems a wee bit more something to get excited about but you know the way they're playing who knows anyway and of course I guess I'll just say it right now since I do it for, for all the other games who can forget the 4-0 pasting that they dished out to us back in September that was a 
another Giovanni Van Bronckhurst uh, team horror show performance that we had just grown accustomed to, unfortunately, at that point. And the game was essentially wrapped up at half time, quite before, uh, quite long before, I should say, half time. And that it was 3 0 at half time, you remember. And it was just an absolutely awful showing that day. So we, we are marginally getting uh, slightly better, but we need. Um, you know, quite simply, this this weekend is is a must win, a must, an absolute must win for us. We don't win, and then we'll just count the games until they're confirmed as champions again. And we already have second place confirmed, so it's then all just about the Scottish Cup semi final at the end of the month and and getting the players rested and recovered and getting minutes and legs and just kind of playing around with whatever he needs to play around with, just to make sure that we are we are ready for Hamden and and you know the opportunity to give us. Another crack at a cup this season as well. So I don't know if he does that. I don't know if you do, like a kind of practice game scenario or not. I don't know. But then, if by the same token, if we win it, we then take it to six points and then you never know. That'll be at least a wee eyebrow or two raised across across the world of that. I am fairly certain and we'll just see what happens, but really, really looking forward to this one. For RTV, for the weekend, we did seem to have some login challenges from, from quite a lot of clubs, and RTV didn't really give us uh, much in the way of, of understanding as to what that had. We had our own challenges here in Calgary, but it was uh, connectivity challenges to the internet. It wasn't it wasn't uh, challenges specifically with the RTV product. We got logged in once we hotspotted to my phone, believe it or not, so we had to, to get that organised. But I think overall... Um, most people got to see the game and, and there wasn't a whole bunch of, of anger around that. But for this week, you know, please get there early. Please log in early and make sure that you get what you need to get in terms of um, any support prior to the game so that we can uh, all enjoy, hopefully, what's going to be a memorable victory. For shout it's just a one this week and it's, it's not a good one, I have to say. I'm, I'm very sorry to be saying this, but my good pal Hammy, here is, uh, and thank you again, Hammy, for the dinner party on Saturday night. I was suitably hungover and fed very well on Sunday morning. But Hammy's great nephew, Max Kyle, had an accident at work. He's got a plant engineering apprenticeship right now, and he's at, uh, I believe it's Fulston Forklifts. And he had an accident uh, with some equipment or machinery, which ended up um, really uh, doing a number on his, on his left pinky. And I saw the photographs at the game. On the weekend, it was just absolutely awful to see. So he went, got rushed to hospital to um, to accident emergency, and unfortunately, they couldn't save his his left pinky. So that's him, him now having to had that amputated there just last week. We did try to give him a call just to kind of cheer him up a wee bit, and I hope to get an opportunity as he's recovering to give Max a call and and just wish him all the very best on his recovery. But uh, that's awful, just awful. Another workplace accident that I'm um, I'm sure probably could have been avoided and. And then now we have a, a young guy with his whole life ahead of him with, with a digit missing, and that's just awful news. Kyle and family are all big blue noses, so on behalf of Narsa Kyle, I'm, I'm really, really sorry uh, for your loss, and, and I hope and wish you a very speedy recovery on behalf of myself, on behalf of, of great Uncle Hammy, and, of course, on behalf of Narsa. And as I say, I do hope to get a chance uh, to have a quick chat with you at some point over the next wee while and just ch- check in and see how you're doing. Ah, really too bad. Really, really too bad. On to the convention for NASA 2023. I can officially confirm that it's 73 days and 10 weeks now. Going to be single digits in weeks next week. Oh, my word. Until Toronto Midtown hosts the biggest bash of the overseas Rangers year. So, all right, here is where we're at this week, folks. The hotel rooms and the convention ticket packages are still out for sale, of course. And what we're doing in the background is working through negotiations with the hotel to see if there's any possibility that contractually we can reduce NARSA's contracted liabilities. Uh, With just about two months to go, it seems like our hotel attrition and our ticket sales have slowed to a point where we have an idea about what the convention will look like. Of course, now the caveat to that is an old firm win this weekend and a Scottish Cup final to look forward to after battering them in the semi-final later this month could change our outlook and our ticket sales but for where we're at right now my job in the final few months of my tenure as president of NARSA is to protect and future-proof the association and I will do absolutely that myself and the team of course will do that and we did send an email 
Um, sorry, I, we are going to send an email out to our distribution list um, tonight. I'm actually going to get that sent out tonight. So for the folks back home or in different time zones, you're probably getting that tomorrow morning. And what we're, what we're hoping to negotiate with the hotel is a two-week deadline on the room bookings. If you don't book your rooms in the next two weeks, um, that would take you up to and including April the 17th then you will be very lucky to get anything at the hotel after that date. And that will also help us right size how many tickets we'll be selling for the event. And then and then we can see. What I can see for right now is that the hotel bookings don't line up with the number of tickets sold in, in terms of, you know, the hotel books. If you were saying, that, for example, there's two people in every room, then the hotel and the tickets don't quite marry up just yet. So maybe there's going to be a wee influx of, of tickets coming, or ticket sales coming over the next wee while. But we'll, I, I guess we'll see a wee bit of activity on both fronts over the coming weeks. But look out for your email if you're registered to be on NASA's distribution list. And you'll get that email. I'll get that, as I say, get that sent out tonight. It's all ready and, and ready to go. And that's why I said that we sent it out. And I've just realised as I was talking that I didn't actually click send. So, <laughs> so the chances of you getting it when I haven't clicked send, pretty remote, I would say. Another reminder that Rosie and team at the Holiday and Flight Centre have do still have the full their full packages available for folks that have expressed an interest in that too. Go to at the and see what they have to offer. So we have our three IV, three VIPs confirmed, of course, and as I fumbled last week to try and get the, the bio for Andy Gray, I hope I didn't upset you too much with that. It was a bit of a pest. My computer desktop was a bit of a mess on that one, but we do have Willie Henderson, Mark Haitley, and Andy Gray confirmed, uh, accompanied by, of course, Heart and Hands' very own David Edgar as MC. And I think based on where we're at right now, that will probably do is for, for the... For the VIPs, you, you never know uh, if we have a bit of an upturn in fortunes in, in terms of the team, then we'll see. We're still waiting to hear also from Rangers Football Club themselves. We had asked them to let us know by the 31st of March there and, and put a wee reminder back over um, into to Stuart Robertson's inbox to say, hey, please, if you could let us know, it's kind of material for us to organise transportation and rooms and, and the various things that we have to get organised for them, but they haven't let us know yet. So I just need to be a bit of a pest to them over the next wee while and we might get someone or a, or a couple of guys or whomever um, organised to, to come over as well. I'm, I'm just conscious that we're, we're creeping on just a couple of months to go here and it would be good to get all that sort of stuff locked in. Magazine still out for sale, $150 per regular page for NARSA clubs and others and then the cheques can be payable to Toronto Midtown and you can e-transfer to tmrsc1998 at outlook.com or PayPal. I was going to say the same address, but I think there was a bit of a, an issue with PayPal. So I'll try and get the details of the PayPal and put that on the blurb for tonight's pod as well. So if you get a chance to read that, you'll be able to see what that looks like. I did communicate the deadlines for last Friday's expression of interest. And I don't know if that was in, that resulted in an uptick in any, any folks getting an expression of interest over there as well. But if you are planning on taking a magazine advert, please do so as quickly as you can because you know we obviously need time to finalise the magazine, finalise the layout and then get organised with the, uh, the actual printing and then delivery as well. So everything is out there. The football, the magazine, the Saturday excursion, they, they're, all, they're all good to go. The entertainment for the Saturday night is organised. The DJ is organised and we, we just need to get um, a wee bit more organised on the leaving do, which we'll, we're planning to have it at the hotel um, as well. We've got a lovely wee spot organised there at the hotel to give us something a wee bit different for, for the leaving do on the Sunday and I'm, f I'm certain you're going to enjoy that. And of course we have the, the flute band organised as well. So all the pieces are in place. We just need to make sure that we, that we have uh, the, the number of guests that we would love to have there as well. On to other business, just another repeat of what I've been doing over the last wee while. This is an election year. Uh, yeah. And we, if you, you've got basically literally two weeks tonight, um, or to, uh, tonight, it's going to be tonight, uh, to get any constitutional changes in and to get any nominations and seconds in for, for any of the positions that are open. As a reminder, all of the positions are up for grabs, apart from the president position. Um, and that's, um, you have to be from within the, the, the NASA executive to be able to qualify for uh, the president's role and on the communications director nominations and seconders we already we now have two 
folks in for communications director. It seems to be quite a popular one. So I don't know if that's a good thing that we're doing communications really well and people want to help on that because it's it seems like the most successful part or we're not doing well on the communications and folks are like, I need to fix this. This is crap. I'm not 100% sure, but it's great to get some, some nominations in there as well. And, and we have one also in for the convention director as well. So we have vice president, we have treasurer, we have secretary, we have the broadcast RTV director, we have the sponsorship and marketing director um, as well. So so two weeks to go. Please don't, don't delay. I know Sandra Hawthorne sent out, I think it was this morning, she sent out another reminder to the clubs just to make sure that their membership was aware of the deadlines and then we could figure it out from there. So on to communications for this week. I was going to hopefully try and get um, Hoggy's interview done. We had a wee bit of a we kind of missed each other at the beginning of last week. So all that to say, I don't have the interview done this week. I will endeavour to do it this weekend coming. I am off on Friday and Monday. It's a long weekend for Easter over here. So I do get the Friday and the Monday off. So I've got, I've got a wee bit more flexibility in my time because I don't have any firm plans over the weekend other than to, to just do some coaching stuff. So I will be able to hopefully track them down then maybe... Maybe even try and do it after the Old Firm game if, if we can and maybe get some thoughts from him directly on, on the Old Firm game as well just to talk about his book, of course, the, the Our Rangers Heroes. So my apologies, but we'll definitely get to that. Just another reminder of the NASA Think Tank with Rangers that we'll get together a bit of a focus group style with Greg Marshall and see where we can help out from a NASA perspective and see where maybe the club could help us as well. As I think I confirmed last week, we have two folks already interested and I, I imagine there'll be quite a few from the NASA executive as well. So this is probably uh, the last chance and the last time we'll call this one out and then we'll see how it goes from there. And finally on the comms front for this week, we didn't, uh, for this, this week, sorry, we didn't get a chance to get myself on the, the, the new Rangers podcast called Glasgow Rangers Nation last week as Victoria Serrell, who was doing the, the, the organising of that, was unfortunately uh, under the weather, wasn't feeling too great. So I believe, now that I'm saying all this, I believe I saw a message come up earlier asking if I was going to be free later this week. So if I can make it happen this week, I absolutely will do my very best. But it's a bit of a toughie with it being a short week at work. So if it's during work times, probably not. But as I mentioned last week, as soon as we get it on there, we'll get it out through our social media channels and our communication channels to let you know if you want to go and see it and have a wee listen and uh, support the Glasgow Rangers Nation podcast. That would be wonderful. Okay, my friends, that will do it. As always, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you very, very much for taking the time to listen to this. I, I truly, truly appreciate it. Um, each and every one of you. I love you all is really what I'm trying to say. Until next week, here's to us really showing up, truly, really showing up against that mob and putting a marker down for the pending Scottish Cup semi-final, the remainder of the season, and of course, for next season as well. Come on, Rangers. Come on, give us something to shout about here. Until next week, my friends, take care and all the very best, okay? Cheerio.